Hello and welcome back to Dominions 5 where last time we had a big battle with our purple rivals in the south and lost, losing a bunch of territories along the way. We did though capture a Throne of Ascension at the top so we've made some actual in-game progress there, although not quite because I didn't know how to claim the throne. But yes, now we're contending the bottom half of the sea once again as this purple faction begins to spread out. However, an army from the north for us has just arrived to help. We've also got our force at Pelagia Castle, which I've been building up for a while. It's actually pretty big now. It's just surrounded by other enemies that could together mash it if they all attacked at once. So our lack of intelligence, or the ability to get intelligence in the game I should say, means we can't tell if they're coming towards us per se, but we're going to take a risk. We're just going to walk out and fight one of them and see what happens. In the end turn sequence there's an interesting battle here, a faction we haven't fought before, a red faction, is attacking me somewhere in the western seas, but more importantly they're attacking me with gelatinous cubes, now that's threatening and some guy, perhaps their master. Well this doesn't do all that much, but that was interesting all the same. Now we do actually get attacked at Pelagia unfortunately while my army was away. However, they're coming at us with a massive pile of trash, and we also have a massive pile of trash here, because that's what you get from the province defense investment thing, where you just put money into the province to have a permanent pile of trash here. And the two piles of trash hit each other for a bit, and R1 wins, so we don't get punished for moving away that turn. Here's what the main force is up to, taking out one of the enemy's field armies by just running crazily at it and overwhelming it with our numbers and superior stats, probably. Obviously I still haven't checked the stats and I'm probably never going to at this stage. There was an interesting battle up top where a bunch of birds are trying to break through to get to the Throne of Ascension. There were also some more minor battles this turn by the way, I think I'll probably stop talking about the battles that aren't especially significant, because from here on out there are going to be loads of battles essentially every turn. Here's another potentially important battle, it's us losing the fort that the enemy had under siege down south. We really had nothing inside so they just walked in and won easily, but we will be able to counterattack immediately because here's our northern army fully assembled, this is an under sea army packed with our underwater only commanders, including two special ones, a magic sea slug and our god leading the majority of the forces. So if we can throw all of that stuff for underwater battles, we might as well use them here because once the enemy aren't in the sea, this massive army is, is going to be completely useless to us for all intents and purposes, so if it dies during this bit of the campaign, that's probably fine. Here they go, just running forwards into the enemy blob. We've got more stuff than them, but we're not going to use it very effectively because we're running in a big column. Now I strongly suspect it is possible for that to not be the case, because while I originally thought if you ordered your guys to attack the enemy rear, they would go around the enemy force and attack the rear, it doesn't work like that, you have to change their formation before the battle. I'm still not even confident you can do that. There's basically what is potentially the worst UI ever designed for setting up how your army will deploy in any battles it encounters. It's just really confusing to the extent that I still don't really know if you can do it. I tried to do it a few times and nothing much happened, but I didn't really investigate it that much due to me being so confused, which is the case with most of the mechanics in the game of course. I think I could do something where the shark knights attack the enemy's rear or something like that if I really tried. In this case, we didn't need it, as it turned out. So that's all fine. However, here's some bad news. A bigger force attacks Pelagia again, and now our trash pile won't quite cut it. The thing about this battle was, I had actually ordered my main group to come back to Pelagia this turn because I was worried that something like this might happen. That's why here you can see me kind of looking around the map and thinking, well are they here? I should have a massive other army somewhere fighting for me, but no, my trash pile gets taken out and we appear to lose this fight. So I wanted to know what actually happened to my troops, have they been deleted or something by some trick of the game? Well no, they are actually there. We've managed to fall foul of the simultaneous turns conundrum, because of course they're not actually simultaneous since the game has to process them in some order. And what appears to have happened is, we're in the castle, we arrived too late to participate in the battle, 
but on time to participate in the retreat into the castle, I guess. So somehow they've besieged us in the castle. Inconvenient, but we can break out and use this big army to break the siege. I'm starting this new thing over here on the right-hand coast, roughly in the middle. I've decided to take a random bit of land in the hopes of one day doing something here. We don't have very much in terms of troops here, but neither does anyone else. So I thought we might be able to sneakily take a few territories after noticing that setup, because most of my stuff here just defending ultimately isn't doing anything, so it would be nice to get some value out of them by taking some random places. And it's a similar deal on the left-hand side, where I've built up a more substantial force with a more intentional attack going on here. I've got this force together with good troops and stuff to push out into the Orange Territory and just take some. We're not going for anything in particular, just want to weaken them and progress our strength. Our minor attacks are successful, although this one against the independent guys on the left-hand coast was pretty deadly because they had those knights that we can't really deal with. They killed all of one of my types of units. They're the Lobo Guards, which are just the trash that run out ahead and get killed. All good stuff. We're being attacked again by the Black Faction, who are sending basically nothing to try and take some of our sea tiles somewhere towards the bottom right. Not too threatening, so we're not paying much attention to them. Our underwater specialist army under our god has taken another of our sea tiles that we lost to the purple guys back. And here is the breakout against the besieging force at Pelagia. The thing was, they reinforced their troop of something like 200 up to 700 just before this battle. So we're actually facing quite a lot in this massive engagement. Luckily, the armies I had inside the castle are our good ones, our official frontline armies with our best commander and mostly good units as well. So they just sort of brawl it out with no strategy for a while and we outstat them. So while they had a massive blob, it wasn't enough. Once we've killed some amount of them, they start to withdraw. We killed pretty much all of them actually before they withdrew and then killed a load more on the way out. In the end then we've succeeded, although having that massive enemy force there wasn't expected and we did lose about half of our good army. So great for now, but that's going to be a setback because this enemy army we've taken down can perhaps be replaced easier. We struggle to recruit at this end of the map and we struggle to recruit in general just because our things take loads of resources to make. I'm sure the enemy are summoning their stuff or getting them for low resources. Obviously, I don't even know. And there are still loads of enemies nearby, so we're not quite out of the woods yet. But progress has perhaps been made. I was trying to sneakily get some territory at the very bottom right against the yellow faction with a little human army I had over there. Thing was, they eventually responded, and I suppose that's the weakness. Our army isn't very good, and these elephants do a number on us. We don't kill anything as they rout our army there. I've also got another army besieging a castle down there. We'll come back to that. Here is our grand advance. I've now put together our underwater army and our main army to form an enormous blob of our stuff to go and fight the nearby enemy blob. And here it is, leading with a glorious shark cavalry charge. If I had a way to make them go over or around the enemy and attack the back, I probably would, but we're not at that stage of knowing the game. I think it might be possible, although I'm less and less convinced the more I look for a way. Whereas the enemy force, they don't have a chance just because we've got so much stuff. So we kill all of their things, they run away, and just like that, we have the sea back under our control. Or most of the sea, I should say. There is a little bit behind the enemy's land territories we don't have. For the most part, we're back. We're here. We're ready to carry on our endless hell war with the purple faction who already have gigantic armies next to us right now. It is not over, and it's nowhere close to being over either. Here, though, an important discovery. I realized that the Throne of Ascension needs some more attention because I was looking at the Throne of Ascension list and noting how it didn't say I had this throne. That's when I came to appreciate this whole the throne must be claimed message. While well, I say appreciate, I still didn't know what that meant, of course. So now I need to work out how do I claim the throne if taking the territory doesn't do that. Well, I did end up cheating here. I went on the Dominion's wiki to find out after coming up with no ideas myself. Turns out that either your god has to go there, which we can't do, or a prophet has to go there. I actually do have a priest who is a prophet. You can just nominate someone to be your prophet, which I think I did right back at the start, not knowing what it did. 
Well now, we've got a use for this random character who annoyingly is on the other side of the map, he can go and claim the throne. This means I have to remember every turn to give him the next part of his order, and that is definitely going to slow down this process because I will not be remembering that. I mentioned before that assassinations were becoming a problem. We lose roughly two to three characters per turn to assassinations pretty steadily every single turn. And that's inconvenient as you might imagine, our commanders keep dying, all of the priests I'm hiring to spread our dominion keep dying, especially, occasionally we kill the assassins back. That's not very useful, we'll come back to that in a second as I started to begin to understand if there was something I could do about that. Here though is some bad news we're looking at. The purple guys have once again rushed down and taken Pelagia. How have they done it? Well I don't know, my army is here. It's another case where I was moving troops into the province to stop this from happening, but they've instead moved into the castle and not done the battle. While we can still defeat the enemy from here, we've technically lost the province so the provincial army is destroyed and I'll have to buy it again to defend the area in the future. We're also taking some casualties over there in the bottom right. The yellow faction is starting to push against us. I was besieging their castle there I think, not doing too much. But generally if they want to kill us they can, fortunately they didn't attack again. We've got some other battles to look at though. Here is the breakout at Pelagia. The good news about this one is our undersea specialty army is here. Not only will they probably do good against land units under the sea, but they're far more disposable because they're less useful to us, so if they die and the amphibious units come in later and survive, that's ideal. There's another bigger battle though, one tile to the west, as the enemy are just pouring down off the land into the sea with all of their stuff. As it happens, my god army was in this tile, so our jellyfish leads this band of mages to fight the enemy primarily with this shark charge. We just throw a whole bunch of sharks at them, and well, we'll see what happens. We've got some trash as well that come in behind the sharks, probably better for them to go in front and just take some casualties and wear the enemy down a little bit, that sort of thing. I think there is a fatigue or stamina system in this game, similar to Total War, so grinding the enemy with trash does do something even if you're not killing them. Looks like our mages and guards are going to advance now. I think that means they'll stop using their magic. It probably would have been better if they didn't do that, but oh well. We appear to have won anyway because the enemy routed. However, in that short battle, we actually lost most of our army. So did they, but as mentioned, it's going to be harder for us to bounce back from losing most of our army. This army came from far away. It took, well, at least 20 turns to make this army and get it here. They can just make what they made right next to the battlefield and have it again soon enough. Inconvenient for us. There's one of our scouts getting killed over in Orange People Land. And here's me finally starting to get on top of the constant assassinations. If you have your defensive armies in patrol mode, sometimes they find agents and kill them. I presume there's some downside to patrolling rather than just saying defend. Maybe your armies are weaker if they have to do a fight or something. Well, we killed a few agents and I'll keep trying to do that. Strategically then, the situation isn't that good. Both sides have killed each other. That benefits the enemy even though I think we got the better of the fighting in terms of value they can recover from the loss of value faster. The Hell War down here shows no signs of ending and it's especially hard just because we're putting so much of our resources into defending our entire empire on all of these other fronts. We're fighting virtually every faction on the map at the same time. They keep making random attacks. I'm occasionally attacking them, trying to weaken them, but not very successfully since we're pushing so lightly on all of our borders due to doing them all at the same time. It's a bit of a conundrum. We need the AI to leave us alone or forget about us, or to really heavily defend in one area or something and try to get more value out of our provincial armies. Well that's what I should have done maybe. Instead, we're going to keep contesting every front because to some extent that's just how I roll. I like to believe that I can win on every front simultaneously. Here was my first foray into what I believe is the formation system. Although you'll see from this foray that I didn't get it enough to do anything with it. I'm just sort of clicking around, trying to work out what I'm doing here. Looks like I'm selecting different elements of the army, or maybe I'm just selecting bits of ground and it's telling me what's in those bits of ground. We can move this big white square around this green square, and I think that's affecting where they'll deploy relative to the commander of the army on the map. Well, we might be doing something. 
I ultimately didn't play with this very much, mainly for fear of making something that was worse than the default in my ignorance. The default pile of units that runs forward tends to be quite suitable to most battles we've seen so far. No doubt we could be doing something better there though, of course. Well, I'm starting my advance again onto the land. I want to knock out the Purple's land provinces as soon as possible, otherwise they will just be coming back forever. Another round of assassinations comes through. Looks like our god was an attempted victim, but it actually killed the assassin, so good job to the jellyfish. We advanced and captured part of the land in a battle that looks like a pretty good exchange right there, so that's good. However, there's bad news for the rest of the turn. Another massive purple army has spawned and gone back down into monster depths, this big bit of sea to the west of Pelagia and it went poorly. Of course, I already know the result of these battles. I've been trying to edit this footage such that you don't always see the results before it happens, which is how it's shown to you in the game. So I'm just kind of watching to see how we lost this fight. Well, it looks like our orange provincial defense army is doing okay rushing forward and stopping the trash, but the enemy have so much trash they're getting around them. The bodyguards, the mages end up in melee, probably not too useful. And while the orange guys seem to have cleared out quite a lot of stuff over there, the enemy are clearing out our stuff and our morale is going. And there goes our god for the second time in a far more legitimate sort of way, just taken out in battle, a terrible portent for our faction overall. So this goes to show the enemy really can just throw up another massive army and attack us again. We hadn't at all recovered from their previous battle. Looks like we captured some orange territory somewhere, that's something at least. And there's us losing another bit of the sea to the bottom right of the land bit I'm trying to take. Just a small group can come and take out the small provincial defense force. There we go then. Things aren't looking too good. Well, I suppose what I'll really say is that they're looking stalematey. Because if you look back a couple of episodes in this series, you might note things are pretty much the same as they are now overall. And this series is, has been covering like six or seven hours of footage over the last couple of parts. So it's kind of worse than it looks in terms of not much is happening. We're just treading water, constantly killing enemies, but they just come back. And it feels like I'm always battling to try and match them in terms of strength. And every time I try to advance and maybe put an end to the cycle, something bad happens on one of the fronts somewhere and it's all over right away. So... I don't really know how to get out of this situation. I'm going to keep trying to get out, just for the sake of creating more footage. I feel like we probably can't win this. We've probably made so many early game mistakes that I don't even know of yet, that it's effectively over already. Still though, we control a lot of territory. We probably have a high income or something. Well, if undersea territories give income similar to on land territories, maybe they don't, of course. We don't really have enough land to judge that. Well, the battles in all directions, now with confirmation that God is dead, will continue. The true hell war of the undersea age will be back in part six.